Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Incredible.
everybody welcome to the stream happy dagger heart day i'm so excited i have the perfect outfit on if i do say so myself but welcome today we are going to be going through the dagger heart playtest materials and hopefully making my first character i guess i don't know i'm very very excited uh and of course there is going to be the live stream where they're playing a one shot where it's actually live which is very exciting because we haven't had that in a very long time um so that's going to be happening directly after the stream i'll finish right as they are starting yes i'm so excited i am so looking forward to getting into all these materials i know we're not going to be able to cover it all today because i've only got like 90 minutes unfortunately this is kind of the worst day for dagger heart to release for me because i have an adelaide fringe show tonight i run a live dungeons and dragons show called big crit energy uh we have our adelaide fringe show tonight it's our only show of the season and therefore i'm like running around like a mad thing trying to get that ready so i really don't have like a huge amount of time to to look at dagger heart <laughs> if it could have released like tomorrow that would have been really helpful like critical role <clears throat> hello did you think about big crit energy oh, there, was an ad? there shouldn't be an ad because i already ran an ad why is there an ad i don't know all right uh let me say hi to everybody so we're streaming today to twitch and youtube so forgive me while i'm a little uh all over the place between the two platforms um oh gosh but there's been a lot of activity on twitch thank you so much for that hype train everybody i'll scroll up and just say hi to everybody uh sky oxford thank you so much for the sub for 13 months darren stewie tarry hello jewel dragon welcome inked fish uh 31 jason hello smitey smite alana on a zombie uh sky thank you so much for gifting two subs baboa blade thank you for the prime sub and also welcome to you sands of patience hello jewel dragon thank you for gifting two subs wise welcome hello jaylee thank you for gifting five subs uh nikki hello l mudrock pocket schna little box here thank you so much for the sub thank you for 12 months of subage thank you happy sub day to you uh greg welcome gremlin jeff grid runner i'm trying to get to everybody so many people here today akira hello mickle welcome stick chap uh chill on days nothing um, happens for a reason it's absolute fucking chaos <laughs> that is uh actually true uh <laughs> thank you so much for the sub uh 31 jason i was like uh, thank you so much for the sub for 19 months that is crazy uh harry she's a rebel hello cassie is queen of pubs beckless oh my god there's so many people here Who, where did you all come from zombie honey hello uh the magnificent thank you so much for the sub and youtube i'm now it's your turn reina <laughs> tequila morgan uh why anyone hello hummingbird uh should be sleeping welcome to you first time catching the stream yay i'm so glad you're here and welcome to anybody lurking as well lurkers are always welcome and appreciated today okay please check my audio levels what's wrong with my audio levels what's wrong with them what in what way you can't just say check the audio levels they look fine to me are they not fine are they not fine what's happening <laughs> somebody tell me please the audio is fine okay the alerts are a little loud and i'm a little quiet okay well i'm as high as i can go i can talk a little closer to the microphone if you like um but if i turn myself up any higher i think we get a little bit of like feedback i'll try a little bit higher okay tech goblins were fine okay good tech goblins oh i see yeah i do see that the alerts are quite loud hold on let me fix why is it that literally every time i stream i have to adjust the levels when everything is exactly the same as it was the previous time i don't understand it it will forever be a mystery to me all right i'll turn this music up a little bit here and then hopefully the alerts will not be so loud fingers crossed okay right we're here we're ready we're gonna we're just gonna dive right in because as I said, limited time and lots of things to get through. But first, I need to put on some uh, lip balm. <laughs> the weather has been playing absolute havoc with my skin lately. Normally a lurker, but I had to join the hype train. Thank you, I appreciate that. Made my main character already. There's no paladin class, but I made it work. Uh, Avonorn, Avonborn, Seaborn, Silver, Dracona, Guardian, Vengeance. Oh my gosh, those are so many words next to each other. But yes, I so I haven't looked at any of the playtest materials because I wanted to do it all fresh with you. But I have looked, I, I watched about half of the Session Zero video and I watched a little bit of the uh, Making a Character video. Um, yeah, just because I was like, I just couldn't wait. Um, so I got into it. 
Um, the Critical Role one shot will air at 7 p.m. Pacific, Story Smith, which is in just over an hour. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, oh, so exciting. So many things to do. Okay, let's. Oh, God. I really need. I never. Th <laughs> ah, sorry. I never thought I would need a fourth monitor, but here we are. I feel like I really need a fourth monitor right now. Okay. We're here. We can see the dagger heart stuff. I can't see chat though, so let me fix that. Oh my god, what a mess. Okay, I can see chat. I can see the I just can't see myself. I can't see my stream. So hopefully if my stream breaks, please tell me in the chat. Yeah, Critical Role is doing a dagger heart one shot today and it is actually live. It's actually live live. Before we jump into this, uh, one other thing, we do have a sub giveaway going. When we reach 200 new subs, uh, I will do a giveaway to a Critical Role shop voucher to the Critical Role shop within your kind of region. Um, yeah, if you're considering subbing and supporting your local Critical Role obsessed weirdo who needs to get more of a life outside of the internet. That's me. Okay. Let's, oh my God, where do we start? All right, should we start by watching the how to play video? I feel like maybe that is a good idea. So maybe let's let's watch this together because I haven't watched this yet. And we'll see. Hey everybody, my name is Matthew Mercer. And I'm Spencer Stark. And we are inviting you here to this video <laughs> to learn how to play Daggerheart, a new RPG. This is so exciting. Currently in development. So before we get into the basics, we just want to remind all of you that this game is now currently in open beta. So things discussed in this video may change, shift, go away, be added to, and that's part of the process of making a game. Indeed. To learn more and even join our open beta playtest, go check out daggerheart.com. So mm. dive in, break the game, tell us what works, what doesn't work, what you love about it, what you hope to see added, and tell us all that through the official Daggerheart open beta surveys. Also, just on that note, I noticed... <laughs> Hey, look, if you want to, that's me live right now. Uh, I noticed as well, I saw somewhere, I think Demiplane tweeted it or something like that, but you can actually give feedback directly from Demiplane, like when you're in your character builder and stuff. So that is really cool. And I think it's a really smart way to capture feedback because, you know, sort of playing the game is one thing. Oh, the video audio is low. Cool. I can turn it up. Playing the game is one thing, but then having to go through that like extra step to um, then like go and find a form and then fill it in, etc. Uh, you know, I think kind of, they're still gonna do that, but like the fact that if you're using Demiplane that you can just kind of see what's happening, you know, you can give your feedback in real time as you're playing, I think is really, really clever. Okay, I've turned the audio up and it should hopefully be good. Let's go. Let's try putting it on 1.5 speed. Babes, I would be watching this on two times speed if I were not streaming this for all of you. I don't understand how anybody can watch anything at one time speed. No shade to you, but my brain d does not work that way. Okay, but I'm gonna focus. I'm gonna focus at the one time speed. The more people who play the game, the better we can make it. So jump in and help us break this thing because we are so excited to build this game with you and not just for you. So please play often and Incredible. submit those surveys so we know what you like and what you don't. Hell yeah. <laughs> So Daggerheart is a fantasy tabletop role-playing game that sort of blends the narrative and the like crunchy together. Yeah, I like that it really it helps facilitate gameplay that is both uh, theater of mind, if that's your mm -hmm. preference, but also easy enough to also play it more tactically and to use maps and minis like I love to do with our mm -hmm. sessions. The game doesn't really stop. Yeah, I'm actually, sorry, I'm gonna stop this like literally every two seconds, but um, I, uh, I can't, <laughs> I was wondering about using it like for maps because obviously, yeah, they like to have these really big elaborate maps, which is really cool. But the distances that they have put that I've like heard is like um, more abstract. So it's like near, uh, like very near, far, very far. And I think they do have like loose n numerical attachments to those. But I'm curious to see that play in real time. Like, you know, when you're just running a encounter sort of out of the blue and maybe you don't have a map for it and then versus when you do have like this in-depth map like, you know, Critical World does sometimes. So I think that's very, very interesting. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for the subs. Pixel Painter, thank you so much for gifting five subs. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. That's really kind. Make sure you say thank you if you get a sub. Uh, also, uh, Devout Sword, thank you so much for the follow. <laughs> Butt Crumbles, thank you for the follow. Uh, Cake Boy, thank you for the follow. Jane Dunn as well, welcome to you. Thank you for the follow. Okay. All right, let's let's keep going. 
down when you're doing combat. You just kind of continue to play the way you do throughout the entire rest of the game. And so everything flows in and out of itself. So it allows you to really focus on the story that you all are telling. And mm -hmm. Deeply customizable character yeah. creation and development process throughout the, the mechanics of the game. It is a long-term campaign game. So it runs over the course of 10 levels, which gives you plenty of uh, fodder to be able to play a year-long campaign with if that is something that you want. But Oh, if something that you want, Critical Role, doing a long-term campaign, pretty sure Session 4 is going to be Daggerheart. A lot of people will disagree with me. I'm putting I'm putting it out there. If they don't run Daggerheart for Session 4, no, Campaign 4, if there even is a Campaign 4, maybe there's going to be a shorter campaign next time. Who knows? But I don't know what I'll do. I'll, I'll learn to play Pathfinder or something. <laughs> <laughs> trying to think what's an appropriate consequence for getting that theory wrong but i mean why wouldn't what why wouldn't they i think most people would agree with you story of a ginger you'd think that until i made a youtube video with that exact theory and let me tell you they did not agree with me <laughs> hey sammy shan welcome i actually really want to learn to play pathfinder so that's not like a, a punishment to me like that would actually be really fun and i do want to learn how to play it okay let us continue we could also jump in and play a one-shot or a couple of sessions, and it uh, works just as well for that. Yeah. One of the things you can really expect from Daggerheart is a game that gives you tools, if you want to use them, to rapidly create in-depth characters that have dynamic relationships with the other players and characters at the table, as well as an opportunity and tools for the GM and the players to build a world mm -hmm. together. You can, you can make and play or run a game as deep or as shallow mm -hmm. or as simple or as robust as you want to. Yeah, so this is this is something that I am so fascinated by with game design. I don't know anything about game design. I'm not a designer. I don't really I haven't really played that many games either. So I feel like I'm not, you know, I'm not an expert. But it's fascinating to me this idea of like some games being very like crunchy, like lots of rules and lots of like, you know, you do it this way or you do it that way versus games that are more like maybe looser in the rules maybe more of a narrative focus and personally just as I've sort of gone on in my like game journey I've started playing D&D &D in like 2018 I want to say and just over those last few years really moving more towards this like narrative kind of game style I still love crunchy combat I still love you know like the the drama that can come from like, oh, I really need to get this like extra five feet. Otherwise I like can't hit this guy, you know, like I really enjoy that stuff. But yeah, I saw some criticism today on the <laughs> controversial subreddit fans of Critical Role. If you ever take a peek in there, you might not realize that they are fans. There are some positive posts in there, but there are many negative posts. And there's not to say you can't critique things, but it's just, they it just seems to be mostly criticism. Anyway. Someone in there today was getting frustrated with this like, oh, you know, I really don't like games that are just like, make it how you want and you can do whatever you want and like, you don't have to follow any rules and like, you can blah, blah, blah. And like, I totally get that. It's a very different game style, I think, to what Critical Role is putting forward. And I think this style of game really fits with what Critical Role has built. Like Critical Role started as quite like crunchy. Uh, Matt in the beginning, I think, had to be quite like rules lawyery because the chat was rules lawyering the shit out of him. Like he could not make a single move without 10,000 people being like, that's wrong. And I imagine that that would be really stressful. And so I think he became a real stickler for the rules for that reason. And then I think over time, you know, it's gotten a little more loosey goosey, which is not to everybody's system. Uh, sorry, to everybody's preference. So I'm reading chat as I'm talking and it throws me off. Um, but I think it just really suits Critical Role. And I think the, uh, yeah, having this more narrative focus and also having the focus in session zero or in character creation be a lot more on those connections between relationships is really, really good because that's something I really loved about Candela. I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but it's, it's what I loved about when I was reading the game of like having this actual system for how to forge connections with your uh, fellow party members. And I played... Um, die as well the role-playing game and that has a similar system where it asks you a bunch of questions about how you relate to the other characters in your party and through this kind of very collaborative process of like oh am I your friend or am I your brother or like whatever you kind of come up with a really cohesive group um, that feels like they do belong together and feels like there's a lot of juice there to explore because I think 
one criticism that I've made of campaign three is that I felt like there just hasn't been enough time for that kind of character bonding um, or those like exploring those interpersonal relationships as much as I would like. There definitely has been some, but it's been a much more plot driven campaign, which really suits some people for sure. Um, But I think this kind of system where you are building those characters together does feel like it's going to be really fun for that kind of group dynamic that I really enjoy. Anyway, I don't even remember where I started this little side tangent, but that's okay. We're literally two minutes into this video. Can I just like (laughs) shut the fuck up for a minute? Okay, let's keep going. And the intent of Daggerheart is to give you all those tools at your disposal and teach you how to implement them in your game so you can kind of pick and choose what it is you enjoy about this or run the full gamut and go all in. Now let's get into the basics of Daggerheart. Okay. Duality dice are sort of the bread and butter for Daggerheart. They consist of two different colored 12-sided die. Your hope D12s! Yes, D12s don't get any love in DD unless you're a barbarian. Yay! Die and your fear die. Now you choose which is which, and for us, we're using these this brighter colored one as our hope die, and this kind of darker red colored one as our fear die. Anytime your team asks you to make an action roll, you'll roll both your hope die and your fear die, and you add them together along with any relevant modifiers represented by little tokens like this. Yeah, you know, the tokens can also be coins or yeah. beads, or you can just do the math in your head, but it helps to have these little representations right there next to the dice you roll to do the quick math. Then you tell the GM your result along with whether your hope die or your fear die rolled highest. For example, let's say Travis is playing Bertrand Bell and is making an agility roll. He has a plus one to his agility trait, uh, and he ends up rolling a nine on his hope die and a four on his fear die, plus the one. He'd add all that together and then tell the GM that he got a 14 with hope. Ah, that's actually really smart about using tokens to track your ability uh, ability modifiers. That's that's nifty. You know, I will say from what just the very little I've seen so far from all the hype on Twitter, the it seems like the game is just really being set up to be easy to jump into and to make it easy for people who are new to role playing games to jump in. Because like, I don't know if you saw, um, hold on, I'll pull it up. Um, there's like for the character sheets, they have this like sidecar kind of thing going on. Let me find it. Oh, also, sorry, I haven't forgotten about this giveaway. I just haven't I haven't drawn the winner yet. I'm sorry. I am going to do it tomorrow. Um, Okay, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here. Right? So... I don't think we need the music. But, like, so you put your character sheet over the top of this, like, cheat sheet, and then you can slide it, and all of the... The arrows point and tell you what those specific parts of the uh, the character sheet are. Like, how is that not the most genius thing I've ever seen in my life? Like, (laughs) I just think that is so clever. Um, and so helpful. I mean, I'm, I don't know if it's been used in other games. I would love to hear if that's the case, but yeah. So the idea of also like adding little tokens to your, uh, dice tray to just be like, okay, I have a plus two. I'll put two in there so that you can have that visual representation for people who struggle with maths and need that visual help. I think is, I think that's really clever. I I think that's very, very clever. I might start doing that for my, uh, D and D, um, rolls as well actually I actually made myself a little cheat sheet of like if I roll a 10 then my you know x my damage is this amount because then you add these things together anyway anyway okay let's continue what time is it I do want to make a character today but I'll tell you what I'm I'm being very interrupting let me catch up a little bit on chat too because I have also been not able to keep up with you uh, we'll miss the d20 system uh, the GM still mainly uses d20s yeah that would be fun to see um the dice are stunning yeah I was surprised that the uh Luxon die was also not a d12 um but maybe they will come out with one in um like when Daggerheart comes out I'm sure there's going to be like Daggerheart branded dice for sure for sure Spencer is good for the soul I love his tone of voice I appreciate how much he uses his hands I feel like I'm also a very handsy talker but I've trained myself to not be so much because my mic is right here and the amount of times I have like bumped my mic is absolutely wild um just finished watching their session zero it was very good i'm excited for the one shot yes um i just love that you can be a weird little mushroom person yes it will help to bring new players to the joy that is rpgs yes because i think that those like adding all those different modifiers can be a real barrier for people because i remember when i first started playing DD, it was like i had zero idea how to add things like what i was supposed to be adding and then the people who were teaching me were like just add this and this and this and i'm like okay but i didn't understand the reasoning behind it so yeah 
Uh, okay. Let's go. Yeah. Now, if a 14 meets or beats the difficulty decided by the GM, he succeeds on his agility roll, and he also gains one hope for rolling with hope. Every time your hope die is higher, you gain a hope, which is a liquid resource your character can spend to aid allies or activate special abilities. Now, sometimes your character might have an experience that you could further modify an action roll in their favor. Like maybe your character has a haggler mm -hmm. as an experience when trying to negotiate with a shopkeeper or a expert herbalist mm -hmm. when looking for medicinal plants in the vicinity. So you can spend a hope before the roll and describe how that experience helps you and then add its value to your roll. You add it all up, and if it meets or beats the difficulty score, you succeed. But your hope and fear die influence what happens next. Indeed, if you succeed with hope, you get what you want, and you gain one hope. Mm -hmm. You can spend that later on. But if you succeed and roll with fear, you get what you want, but it may come with a consequence or add a complication. Mm -hmm. Additionally, the mm -hmm. GM takes a fear token. A liquid resource that the GM can use to affect the story both in and out of combat, but we'll cover that later. If you feel- It's interesting, I wonder, because Candela has that system of um, like levels of success. So I wonder just how that's going to kind of like play out in this with, yeah, with the fear die. I don't know. I've, I, I haven't ever played a system like this, so I kind of got to, I think I'll have to play it to um, really get a handle on it. Speaking of playing it, I am actually in the process, hopefully, of organizing a Dagger Heart one shot to happen on the channel pretty much this time next week, a little bit earlier than this, though, I think at like 10 a.m. my time, which is, what time is it now in Pacific? It is now currently 6, 6 p.m. Pacific, so it will be at f 5 f 4 p.m. Pacific, because we're doing it for three hours. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'll put it in the Discord when, when, uh, when I've worked it out but yes hopefully gonna be doing a uh, running a dagger heart one shot next week just to kind of like learn the system with all of you live as we go so we'll see with hope you don't get what you want and will likely face consequences but you still gain a hope and if you fail with fear you don't get what you want and you may suffer major consequences additionally the gm takes a fear token now lastly if you roll doubles on the two dice you get a critical success which means you get exactly what you want you gain a hope you clear a stress and possibly some other cool benefits alongside it. Well, now that we've explained the basics of the duality dice, let's uh, lightly skim the character creation process. All right, we might a... skip through this because I did. We are going to make a character together. Oh, maybe I should watch it though because I don't. <laughs> yeah, no, maybe we should. What? Yeah, we're all right. Let's keep going. <laughs> um. So I want to play a Dagger Heart game, but I have no one to play it with. Yeah, I know. Me too. I'm like, I'm already running two D and D games, and I'm like, oh, maybe can I squeeze a third game in there? Maybe, maybe. I'm a little leery of the hope and fear mechanic because it means that the DM has to keep coming up with bonuses and complications on the fly, which could get mentally draining after a while. Yeah, I think. Um, hmm. How do I feel about that? I actually feel like. DMs do do that like for D&D &D, a lot all the time anyway but it does because it it puts it in the system it maybe can feel a little bit more pressure to rather than just saying um you no nah, you didn't do it Spencer hello thank you so much for stopping by everyone give it up for Spencer Stark congratulations on the success um and the release of the beta play test I'm so so excited to be jumping in um yeah Congratulations to all of you um, over at Critical Role and Darrington Press. Everyone say, hi, Spencer. <laughs> We're just watching your very enigmatic hand communications. <laughs> Crystal, thank you so much for the prime sub. Yeah, I'm really enjoying everything so far. Also, the production quality out of all the stuff that's coming out is just so good. Incredible. It's so engaging. Oh, Smitey, thank you so much for gifting a sub to Spencer. That's so kind of you. Thank you. Um, yes. All right. Let's continue. <sighs> now I feel nervous says Spencer has dropped by. <laughs> now I'm, I'm, I'm watching and I look Deeper at the same time. Deeper dive character creation. Check out our Daggerheart character creation video where I sit down with Travis Willingham and make Bertrand Bell, which is linked here. But for the purpose... I did watch about half of that before. Also, the fact that they're using Bertrand and they're talking about Xander and stuff in context, which is great, obviously, because we all know that setting. Campaign four, we're gonna get Isilra, but it's gonna be using Daggerheart. That's my opinion. That's I'm very excited about my theory. 
You got any any uh, insider knowledge for you there? Getting ready to jump into the one shot. No worries. Enjoy. Have a great time. I can't wait to watch it. At least you got his name right. Stick chap. Shh. Don't embarrass me in front of Spencer Stark. <laughs> I would never call a Critical Role cast member by the wrong name if they came by my Twitch chat. There is no video evidence whatsoever that that, is, that has happened ever before. Okay. <laughs> of this video will give you a brief overview. Our character classes are Bard, Druid, Guardian, Ranger. I have to pause again. This Bard artwork is some of the most, it's like one of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen. I really hope they sell it as a print or something. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Shh. When does that happen? It's never happened, Mikkel. It's, <laughs> it's never happened. <laughs> I am never gonna live that down. Rogue, Seraph, Sorcerer, Warrior, and Wizard. Indeed. Every class has one or more class features, which are spells and abilities that are unique to each class. Like the Rogue, for example, has a thing called Cloak, which allows them to move into a space where no enemies can see them and be effectively invisible as long as they don't move or attack. Now, each class also consists of the meeting of two domains, which are like symbolic themes. Mm -hmm. Through these two domains, you pick and choose what abilities you want for your character by taking domain cards at character creation mm. and every time you level up. These domains are Arcana, the domain of innate or instinctual magic. Blade, the domain of weapon mastery. Bone, the domain of swiftness. All right, so how's everybody feeling? <laughs> People... <laughs> People are still caught up on the uh, on the boat. I don't know what you're talking about. It never happened. So stop. Uh, Elias Raven, hello. Thank you so much for the follow. <laughs> Welcome. All right. How is everybody feeling about um, the fact that like there's kind of like a card component to this game? Personally, I really like it. I understand that it's kind of like an extra... I guess for some people it might be a barrier, right? Um, where you have to like acquire the cards, you have to get them printed if you want to use them. I don't think you have to use them though. It just seems like it's kind of like a tool. Um, I think it's a really, really great idea though. And I know that I, it would, I think it would help me a lot if I'm like, okay, I have to pick between these two cards. All right, I've done that. I have to pick between these two cards. And also I really like the idea of only having one of each card available. Um, I know they talked about that in the session zero of like, if you want, if two people want to use the same thing, then you can just print off another one. Um, but I personally like the idea of just having one of each card available because then you have, you're going to have a lot of variety because, you know, let's, Let's be real. There's, if, to me at least, there's nothing that feels more like, oh, is when you like build a character and you're like, my one thing is this. And that's the thing I'm going to do really well. And I'm going to be that person in the party. And then like you have another person who, you know, not necessarily intentionally, maybe knows that you're doing that, but just happens to have like a similar trait to you. And they're like, oh, well, I can do it as well. And you're like, oh, okay. Well, I thought I was special. Um, so I kind of like that idea of having just a single kind of um, aspect. ADHD brain would be so satisfied. I agree. Yes, I totally agree. Uh, they might as well leave Exandria for the next campaign. I don't think they're going to Reckless. I don't think they're done with Exandria. And I think it would be too risky to move on from both Exandria and D&D at the same time. I imagine that they're going to... I mean, they're already doing it. They're already making, you know, Bertrand Bell in it. And I think the... Um, they don't need to retcon the Daggerheart races. I think they'll just start using the new names just like they did with the gods and stuff like that. But anyway, that's just my opinion. Love your content. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I think the cards are a very convenient and efficient thing to have for a tabletop game. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think it's really neat. I'm a reference card person and I use spell cards for D&D. See, I've never gotten spell cards. I've just never gotten around to getting them, but I would like them. Um, some of the tarot cards from Critical Role are blank. I can probably write the spells on them. Ooh, there you go. But yeah, I think it'll be it'll be f fun. Like I imagine they're going to sell the cards as like an add-on for the book or maybe they'll come with the book. Who knows? Um... But yeah, I think I think it will be good, and I, and I imagine you can just you'll be able to print them from like a PDF. So yeah, all right, let's continue. <laughs> We're five minutes in. I do want to make a character. Maybe we should jump over to the character creator because well, we still got a little bit of time. Um, I kind of want to get into the the fun stuff though. Let's go. Let's jump to the game master stuff actually. Because yeah, there is a whole character creation video which i have watched part of let's let's jump to the gm stuff and see what that says 
Difficulty values for your players is a time-honored tradition for many game masters. And when it comes to Daggerheart, a general good rubric to follow when setting difficulty values is a range of five being very easy, like extremely easy, up to 15 being your standard average difficulty, all the way up to 30 and more being nearly impossible. Huh. You should also be that's, aware- That's interesting because that is the same range for D&D. Like normally five is extremely easy, 30 is nearly impossible. So it's interesting that it's the same range even though it is 2d10. I don't know, I'm not a maths person. Is, is rolling 2d10 better than rolling 1d20? I don't know anything about this stuff. Uh, the one shot has not been uh, has not aired yet, Kaylin. It airs in forty five minutes. Um, but yeah, I was like, oh, but you you you'll be rolling less than when you roll a d twenty, and then my brain is like, no, ten plus ten is twenty. The um, so yeah, of course the ranges would be kind of the same. Aware <laughs> of the circumstances right. surrounding action rolls because they may grant advantage or disadvantage. Mm -hmm. For example, maybe you're attempting to lift a broken carriage out of a muddy ditch in the pouring rain. And if that's the case, the GM may impose disadvantage on the strength roll to do that. This situational modifier is represented by including 1d6 with the action oh. roll. With advantage, you add the sum of the d6 to the roll. If you have disadvantage, you subtract the value from Ah, that's interesting. I like that idea of adding an extra die for advantage rather than like re-rolling. Hmm. Roll instead. Always remember that at any time, a player can give another player advantage on an action. <laughs> I just realized as well, I said 10 plus 10 equals 20, but of course you're rolling D12, so it's... <laughs> I can do maths. Ha! Yeah, no, Elastro, you are... Yeah, I got it. <laughs> There's a slight delay, so now all of the comments coming in correcting me. Yeah, sorry, I misspoke. <laughs> Action roll by spending one hope and describing how they're aiding their ally. Now let's talk a little bit about how combat works. Yes, please. Combat in Daggerheart is designed to be a free-flowing narrative experience with minimal stop-downs and a multitude of possibilities for theater of the mind and map-based conflict. When you want to make an attack, you'll first ask the GM if it's in range of your weapon. So melee range means that you're within touching distance of the target. Very close is anywhere from like five to 10 feet away or the shortest length of a game card when measured on a map. Close is between 10 and 30 feet, or about the length of a standard pen or pencil. Far is between 30 and 100 feet, or the length of a standard piece of paper. And very far is between 100 and 300 feet, or anything beyond the length of a piece of paper that's within the scene. If it is in range, make an action roll and add any relevant modifiers. And if the roll meets or beats that creature's individual difficulty score, it hits. I have a feeling I am not remotely going to remember that range system at all. I think I probably will just end up going with the, like, feet system. Or at least just, like, I feel like if you're going to use a map, I would default to, like, the feet, like, as in, like, X amount of feet, 100 feet, 20 feet, whatever. But if I'm running more theater of the mind, I would probably just get it all away altogether and just go, oh, you're far away, so you can't hear, or you're very near, so you can hear, and not be like... Yeah, I think it's, I think it will be, yeah. I think you re use rollers, but they give these to keep it less specific. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Not as truly as a feet rule. Yeah, exactly. I think that's right, Tara. I think I like that it's a bit more like just kind of loose, but I, I also think if I was using a map, I would probably just want to stick with like the squares because the squares are already there. Um, but if you're doing like um, theater of the mind combat then using kind of more of the just those like adjectives of like far very close etc works um the die rpg is like that you just have those three distances and you don't have like a speed or anything you just kind of have the gm will be like well yeah you can get within range in your turn or like no it's too far you know you probably can't get there this turn that kind of a thing so yeah i feel like any character who uses ranges will remind you hey i'm near yeah it'll, <laughs> it'll be like the new dark vision i have dark vision um, crits are now rolling doubles rather than max on the die. Yes, double d12 is going to be very rare. Yeah. So I'm making a roller template to keep the ranges straight. Yeah. Um, I do like the idea of like giving it kind of more of a, a low tech vibe of like, you know, you know, you can use a roller, but you could also just like use your pencil. Like, I think that's pretty fun. Um, it's just whether, yeah, how that flow of kind of, um, changing the sort of between the two ideas will, will work. All right. Continue. Now simply roll your damage dice and add their values together. 
Creatures also have minor, major, and severe damage thresholds, just like player characters, uh, and a variable amount of hit points and stress, but they don't have armor or evasion scores like player characters. Now for you GMs out there, if you're rolling to see if a creature hits a player character, you simply roll a d20, add the relevant modifiers from that monster's sheet, and see if it hits that player's evasion score. If it hits- Right, so if the 2d12 are slightly better than rolling a d20, so the players always have like a slight advantage on the GM, if that's what it runs. Yeah, Jared's in the background. Got some Jared emotes in the chat. Can, can they see you? I can't see my screen, stream preview. Oh, you, <laughs> I can just see you in the background. <laughs> thought you were prepping for my show. I thought you were, you know, getting ready. Doing your hair. I thought you were prepping for your show. <laughs> Jared, Jared is doing the, uh, the tech for my show tonight, so. I'm just hassling him. Um, I'm going to buy three feet long pencils from Amazon. <laughs> yeah, something tells me that the DM might not allow that. <laughs> Player monster bonus is not one-to-one, -one, though. Yeah, agreed. So the monster bonuses might be slightly higher. Yeah. I like the idea that in a pinch, you can use stuff you have around you to measure. Yeah, I agree. I think that's cool. It does kind of feel like it takes it back to that sort of like, you know, doing a... um map on a piece of paper or things like that. Hope there's an open policy for third party companies to make content for Dagger Heart. There is a currently a fan content policy up on the Darrington Press website, which you can have a look at. Um, I haven't looked at it in terms of releasing third party content. I just looked at it in terms of like uh, fan content like I make, like videos and stuff. Um, but yeah, so you can go and have a look. It is on the Darrington Press website. Um, I do believe you can make third party content, but there's probably some restrictions to that. But again, I, I don't. Don't don't quote me because I haven't read the full policy, but okay. Um, all right, here we go. Continue. It's roll for damage, and the player determines if they'll spend armor slots to reduce it or how many hit points they have to mark thereafter. Now, if your players are entering into a combat that will last for more than one or two turns, your GM may place an action tracker on the table. When an action tracker is out, players add a token to it whenever they make an action roll. Players will continue to make action rolls in combat until they fail and or roll with fear, which then allows the focus to shift to the GM to make what's called a GM move. Now a GM. That's cool. I like that idea of like initiative rather than rolling initiative going in an order. Because something I have always, always, always wanted to incorporate more into my D&D games is more um, like setting up group moves, uh, sort of setting up coordinated attacks and things like that. And sometimes that doesn't always work when you have like an initiative and, you know, turns out you're rogue is at the bottom of the initiative when you needed them to go at the top for whatever reason or you know things like that um so playing Baldur's Gate 3 has actually made me really think about initiative in terms of like because in Baldur's Gate 3 if all of your characters are in the same initiative chunk you can take their turns in any order you want so you can have your spellcaster cast hold person before your barbarian attacks so that you're potentially you know are going to get a crit or whatever and I really like that idea of yeah, having a sort of mechanical way of being like, okay, well, I'm going to take my turn first. I'm going to take my turn second. We're going to keep doing that until the um, GM goes. And I think it could lead to some like longer combats if you're having more discussion around that stuff. But I think that's more interesting to me than just like waiting for my turn to come around, hitting the thing and then waiting for my turn to come around again. Uh, I, I like the idea of it being more collaborative each round. And I also love the acknowledgement of like combat is only going to last a couple of rounds, which is pretty standard, you know, so you're only going to get one or two things off before the monster is dead. Um, um, it's just a track for this initiative. Yeah, rolling for initiative sometimes feels a bit too mechanical. Doesn't let the battle flow smoothly. Yeah, from a role playing perspective. Yeah, and I try really hard to do like um, linking moves. So I, I try to get my players to narrate what just happened before and then narrate what they do in response. And that's kind of a nice way to get at least a bit of narrative flow. But I, I like the idea of being able to swap around who goes when. I think that that's really fun. I like that. Yeah, BG3 definitely made me rethink some rules as well. I was like, ooh, I'm, I'm thinking about making a video of like, what am I stealing from Baldur's Gate to put into my D&D games? <laughs> um, all right, let's continue. GM move is literally oh, just shoot. the GM taking a turn. <laughs> all right. So after a player rolls with fear and or fails an attack roll, the GM then has the opportunity to spend any number of action tokens from the tracker ooh. and activate that many enemy combatants. <gasps> so all those turns the players took in succession now have turned into resources for me. 
ha 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 that's fun that's i like that that sounds that sounds fun <laughs> after the gm turn is resolved play then passes back to the players. Anytime, GMs can also spend two action tokens to gain one fear token. Remember those? How every time your player characters roll with fear, the GM collects a fear token? Well, here's where they factor in. At any point during combat, a GM can spend two of the fear tokens accrued during a session to make a GM move without needing the players to roll a failure or win. Ah, so it's like a legendary action or something like that. That's cool. Fear. Additionally, GMs can spend fear tokens to activate special abilities of adversaries, or generate action tokens for themselves, or make particularly big and dramatic GM moves. If things go really bad in or out of combat, character death in Daggerheart is a real possibility. But the system offers players three options to choose from when the character marks their final hit point. The first option is called Blaze of Glory. This option lets your character, you guessed it, die in a glorious and heroic fashion, where they take one final action that will be an automatic critical success before passing into the great beyond. Yes. Then there's the ever popular avoid death and face the consequences, where your character drops unconscious and cannot take any actions until they get at least one hit point back. When this happens, you roll your fear die, and if it's equal to or under your level, you gain a scar, which means you permanently cross out one of your hope slots. And finally, there's Risk it all, our personal favorite, I believe, <laughs> which leaves it all up to chance. You roll your duality dice. If your hope die is higher, you stay on your feet and clear an amount of hit points and or stress equal to the value you roll on your hope die. But if your fear die is higher, you immediately cross through the veil of death. Now, if the duality dice are tied, which once again is a critical success in Daggerheart, you don't just stay on your feet, you also clear all of your hit points oh, wow. and stress, renewed and ready to go right back into it. That. I cannot rave about this part enough. I am a big, big fan of having options for handling death in your game. Um, so I've always, you know, it's always been my thing of like, it's important to talk about what the expectation of death is in a session zero and to revisit that as you go through a campaign. Because some characters are totally would be thrilled to have their character go out in a blaze of glory. I'm one of those people. Like I... I'm constantly throwing my character into danger because I'm like, just kill me, you coward. I'll do it. Um, and just like, I, it's so thrilling to me when I throw myself into danger and I come out of it the other side, but I would be equally fine if like my character were to die. Whereas some people, that's not fun for them. And that is, it's okay that it's not fun for them. Um, and I think having the option of like, how do you want this to work for you? And I love the idea of, yeah, you can live, but there are going to still be consequences. So it doesn't feel like you're you're walking on eggshells with that player or you're feeling like you have to hold back because they don't want to die. But like the fact that you can say, don't worry, like if you don't want your character to die, you're not going to die. Um, but there are going to still be consequences in this game. And, you know, discussing what level of consequences those are going to look like in your game is also important. Like, you know, what's the uh, the deadliness level of your campaign? You know, those are all things you've got to discuss in like any game that you play, really. Um, yeah. I'm very impressed with that. That sounds super fun. Now that we've covered all the stuff you can do in combat, let's touch on some of the stuff you can do during your downtime. Uh. <laughs> Ooh, downtime. When you take a short rest in Daggerheart, you can spend about an hour doing two of the following options. You can tend to your wounds or another player's wounds, clearing 1d4 hit points. You can blow off some steam and clear 1d4 of your stress. You can spend time mending your armor or another person's armor mm -hmm. and clear two marked armor slots or you can simply spend the time preparing yourself for the path ahead and gain a hope. If you're able to make camp and relax for a few hours, you can take a long rest and choose two of the following. Clear all marked hit points, clear all marked stress, fully mend your armor, clearing all marked armor slots, or do this on an ally. You can prepare and gain one hope, or you can choose to prepare with one or more members of your party and instead take two hope each. Lastly, you can work mm. on a project. It takes a substantial amount of time, like deciphering an ancient codex or crafting a new weapon. Does this mean that we are going to get more camp fire scenes? Because those are my favorite. And also, I love that they put in the work on a project. That feels specifically aimed at Percy. <laughs> that feels specifically it was like, Percy, it's it's nine years later, but this mechanic right here is for you. Um, yeah, I really I really love that. I'm I'm 
I like that you kind of are getting some narrative options as well as mechanical ones. Like, you know, if you narratively choose to mend your armor, then you can play out, role play a scene where you're doing that, you know, or um, I think they've tried to do that in the past too, where they've tried to sort of show what's happening in the mechanics in the narrative. But yeah, it'd be, yeah, I like, I'm hoping we get more like long rest scenes that way for sure. Deanna can do her knitting. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Um. Uh, the fear and hope tokens work a lot like the threat and uh, momentum tokens in Star Trek Adventures. Ooh, I don't know anything about that game. Yeah, that sounds fun. As a crafter, if I don't have something to work on at the campfire, I would be very sad. Yeah, exactly. You always got to have a little, a little project on the go, you know? I really want to see characters from Xandria in Dagger Heart World, almost in DC or Marvel. Well, honestly, I, mean, I think we're going to. I've... I think we're going to see them playing Daggerheart, but in Exandria, I think it's still going to be canon. It's just they're going to move to a different game system. Uh, I really, I don't see them moving away from Exandria um, when they play Daggerheart. I think we're probably going to see some, like, while the playtest is happening, I think we're definitely going to see some short series, maybe like an EXU sort of style short campaign. But I think if if the game is received well and critters seem to enjoy the sort of short form content we get, I don't see why they would not do campaign four in Daggerheart. But I think it would be crazy to move away from Exandria, really, at the same time. So I think it probably will be Exandria. Um, all right, let's continue. The GM will assign this project a countdown. And each time you work on this project, you tick down that countdown until the project is complete. Now, when you're at level five or above during a long or short rest, you can swap domain cards in your loadout with any domain cards in your vault. This is useful because you can only have five domain cards in your loadout at a time but you really don't have to worry about that until higher levels anyway. I think that's it. I think that's all. I think that, that, <laughs> that wraps up our uh, our quick and dirty overview of the Dagger Hearts rule set. As- all right, awesome. Well, this is very, very exciting. Yeah, 30 minutes. I know that's, I was just looking at the time and I'm like, all right, we're gonna quickly, we're gonna quickly try and make a character. Uh, I already found one issue or more of a question, so it's feedback time. Yeah, excellent. Absolutely. I encourage everybody to give feedback um, on the system in the 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 places where you can give feedback here. Playtest play surveys. Definitely pass that feedback on for sure. I hope what they do what they've done with Candela and have multiple GMs come in and put their own flavor on the system. Yes, I think that would be great. Uh, I feel like the project mechanic could also work with what Chetney does. Yes, totally agree. Absolutely. All right. Now, what happens if I click play Daggerheart? Oh, I have to submit an email to get the playtest material. Wait, but I can get it on Demiplane, right? Demiplane. Okay, hold on. I'll go over here because I'm sure I'm going to have to like log in and do a sign up and stuff. So let me do that real quick because I've never used this before. Um... Oh, hold on. I'm going to be lazy and just use my Google. All right, let's try this. And we will see how we go. Oh, oh no, I've lost chat again. <gasps> chat, where are you? Where have you gone? Oh, why didn't that work? Oh, I have to put in a username. Okay. Lubafin. Good free. All right, continue. Am I going to have to... I shouldn't have to buy it, should I? Skip this for now. By the way, your earrings are dope as fuck. Thank you. I thought they were very appropriate. Um, okay. Can we just start with the questions? Let me in. Let me in! How do I... How do I find... Daggerheart. Daggerheart. Okay, create characters. I think... I think we're here. Um, da, 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 da. If anyone's curious, Jared is playing the new Final Fantasy. Oh yeah, <laughs> someone just asked what's Jared up to. <laughs> He's playing the new Final Fantasy, the the second one of the. What is what is the game that you're playing? What, what game are you playing right now? People want to know. Uh, Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth. Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth Part Two, or is that already? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. That's what he's playing. Um, all right. Uh, no, not right now. Okay. Am I in the right spot? Why did my live stream end? No, it didn't. Oh my god. I almost clicked end stream. That would be bad. I have once again lost chat. <laughs> I need another monitor. Okay. 
All right, create characters. <gasps> mm, this is so exciting. Okay, uh, create a character for, this is really cool. For where? Where? Do I have to click here? Dagger heart, create character. Oh, this is up the top here. <laughs> it's so good, Rebirth. Oh, I'm glad you enjoy it. Yeah, I think Jared's been enjoying it as well. Okay, open beta playtest. As you dive in, keep in mind that the game and these tools are still in active development, so some of the things you encounter could be unpolished or being actively developed. Share your thoughts in the official playtest surveys, the feedback section of your digital character sheet, Demiplanes forums, or on our Discord server. Okay. This is so cool. All right, game is still in active development. The rulebook has not gone through an editor. The balancing of adversaries is still exploratory. Modular system, setting system is still exploratory. Art is all subject to change. Uh, you can stream your games. We only ask that make it clear that your project is using the playtest. Oh, here we go. You can't publish and or sell any Daggerheart related products quite yet. Once the game is published, this restriction will no longer be in place. There you go, for whoever was asking earlier. Um, all right. <gasps> this is exciting. Okay, so what do we do first? We choose a heritage? Choose an ancestry. Ooh, okay. So we've got the clank, or like the, can I see a picture? <gasps> Yay! We're like the automaton, the aormatons, if you will. Um, de demon? Every time I see this word, I always want to read it as daemon. <laughs> but demon, I believe is the appropriate, <laughs> appropriate pronunciation. Dracona, look at this. We've got dwarf. It's funny how you can tell which kind of um, terms are potentially like copyrighted by other companies based on which ones have like new names or new spellings. Uh, elf, fairy, yay! I love fairies. Fawn, high fern, furbolg. Uh, fungrel. I just have been doing some of the fungus, um, uh, some of the myconoid stuff in Baldur's Gate. Uh, Galapaga. It's like a turtle. Giant. Very tall humanoids. <laughs> Goblin. Halfling. Human. Katari. That's the, yeah, like tabaxi, right? Orc. <laughs> Ribbit. <laughs> they knew what they were doing when they put this one in. And Simia. Mm. Okay, what are we feeling? Throw in the chat. What are you think? What are you thinking? On the character creator, if there's a number next to a section, there's something in there you need to fill out. If there is a check mark, you're done. Okay, good to know. Alright, what are we thinking? Ribbit? Yeah, no bird people. That is actually interesting. I would have thought they would have had. Some kind of Aarakocra situation. Maybe that will come out later. I do imagine that there will be like supplements and things. <laughs> Ribbits. Everybody wants a ribbit. <laughs> Session zero was a blast. Yeah, I wished about half of it. I'll always choose mushroom person. Yeah. Ribbit, ribbit. I think they already use uh, Galapa in Exandria as an alternative for total. Yeah. I want to see something not shown in session zero. Can see you playing Katari or Fungril. Crit success does ignore a difficulty number. Yeah, I was wondering about that too. Like if you roll two ones, then you still succeed. Yeah, I just have, we'll think, I, I always do the name of the character last. Um, so we'll, we'll get to that at the end. All right, it seems like Ribbit is the, um, <laughs> the winner. I'm not surprised. I'm sure there are a billion Ribbits out there. Actually, no, yeah, let's do Ribbit. I was like, maybe I'll make my, my current D&D character just to see how that transfers over. But no, let's try for Ribbit because it's cute af. Okay, so we're a Ribbit. Those of Ribbit ancestry resemble anthropomorphic, anthropomorphic frogs with protruding eyes and webbed hands and feet. You can breathe and move underwater just as easily on land. You have a long tongue. <laughs> you can use your long, powerful tongue to grab onto things close to you. You may also mark stress to unleash it as a finesse close weapon that does D12. Excuse me, physical damage. All right. 
All right, get here with that long tongue. All right, choose a community. Now, this is very interesting because when I saw the plates, some of the playtest materials coming out of Gen Con, I thought that these were like names of places, um, like Wonderborn. I thought that was like the name of a place, but now I see that it's more of like an archetype. Um, so all of these communities, you could pick somewhere in Exandria and easily work out the archetype um, of, of like the community where you're from. So... Uh, you know, if you grew up in the Cobalt, uh, so like if you were Bo, for example, um, you could put yourself as Lawborn, um, or, you know, Ford would be Seaborn, you know, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so I think that that's, that's a kind of really fun way to think about where your character is from. I really like that. I don't think it's like a social class. I think it's more of just, uh, like an archetype. Uh, of where people come from and those you know you can have multiple kinds of communities within a location as well do you know what i mean uh stefan thank you so much for the follow uh welcome in how you doing i'm just interested in giving my d12 some love i know right you just like never get to use them really yeah closer to backgrounds it's like a combination of like background and like birthplace i guess so i think that's really fun um all right, what should we be? So we've got highborn, which is like nobility, essentially. Life of elegance, opulence, and prestige. Please feel free to throw your suggestions in the chat. Uh, lawborn, uh, you're brought up in a place that favored strong academic or political prowess. Uh, Orderborn, you were raised in a place of great discipline or faith and uphold a set of principles that reflect your experience there. Oh, so that could be like Vasselheim. Or something like that. Ridgeborn. Uh, means you call the rocky peaks and sharp cliffs of the mountainside home. Seaborn. That makes a lot of sense. Grew up near a large body of water. Slyborn. Oh, this is more like a criminal under 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 city kind of vibe. Growing behind the underbelly of society, surrounded by criminals and con artists. Oh, what's underbot? Oh, that's like underdark. Subterranean society. Wonderborn. Uh, you raised as a nomad and wildborn. Uh, you were raised by a clan deep within the forest. Ooh. Love a prince frog. We could do a prince frog. Um, Ridgeborn, seaborn, autoborn. Autoborn could be interesting. A lawborn, a frog who reads. <laughs> a criminal and spy frog. <laughs> Um, in session zero, they brought out the map. The players got to pick and choose the location and name. That's cool. They have a map? I haven't watched all of the session zero yet. I've watched about half of it. Slyborn frog picking pockets with its long tongue. Okay, I do genuinely love that idea. So let's try that. Slyborn. All right, now we're going to choose a class. I guess it would make sense then if we were going to go like a rogue. But let's have a look at all of them. All right, so a bard. Oh, I love this artwork so much. It's so pretty. Ooh, class items. Oh, like a little extra item you get. A romance novel or a letter never opened. Oh, that's mysterious. I like it. Okay, so you, at the beginning of the session, place a d6 on your character sheet. When anyone in your party rolls with fear, turn the die up. When you increase the value above six, describe how you rally the party and give every character who listens a 1d6 rally die. That is really cool. That is a... A really cool spin on bardic inspiration that you don't just like throw it out willy-nilly like you throw it out when your party needs it you know what i mean <laughs> tusk love in your inventory absolutely they have a set of maps that can be linked together oh i did see that on the um on twitter that it's like kind of like a tile system with the maps that's really really cool um yeah i love i really like that take on bardic inspiration that's really fun okay druid can perform harmless subtle effects that involve nature at your will. Oh, so like druid craft. Also take the beast form sheet. Oh, so you still get a wild shape. You lose the use of your abilities, weapons, armor, and domain cards, but gain the features and trait bonus of the creature. Okay, that's cool. Guardian. Is this like kind of like a paladin type of a vibe? Uh, once per long rest, you become unstoppable. Unstoppable die begins at a d4. Place it on your character sheet. Uh, while unstoppable, you gain resistance to physical damage. You add an additional d. Oh, so this is like a barbarian. 
Additional D6 to any damage rolls you make. Can spend stress to reroll any single die you've rolled. Ah, that's cool. Hmm. Okay. I do also love I love that you kind of have little um you know dice that you put on your sheet to to spend and stuff like that's really fun. Okay, ranger. Maybe a lot of D&D &D people will be thrilled to see a ranger. <laughs> see I was live but the countdown is 18 minutes. Yeah, so I'll finish up um probably here in about 10 minutes so we'll probably we're going to we got to hustle through this. Um, spend hope and make an attack with your weapon. On a success, you temporarily have focus on the target while doing, along with doing damage. While focused, you know precisely to what direction they're in. You add extra damage. Uh, you may end ranger's focus to reroll your duality die. Okay. So that's kind of, yeah, like focusing on a particular prey. I guess kind of like your, um, you know, like Vex had her like dragon stuff and, and whatnot. Yeah, we still got to do the subclasses too. Okay. We've got a rogue. Oh, we did see that in the um, the video that you're hidden if as long as you don't move. The seraph seems kind of like clericy, paladiny. You get a prayer die at the beginning of your session. Roll a number of d4 dice equal to your spellcast trait. Store them to the right. You can use them at any time to use a value in reducing incoming damage, adding to a, a roll result. Oh, so it's kind of like a bless situation. Okay, sorcerer. Brando, thank you so much for the resub. Welcome. Um, you can sense the presence of magical people and objects when you're close to them. You can do a minor illusion. Channel raw power. Once per long rest, you can place a domain card from your loadout into your vaults. She's the gain home eagle. Yeah, so I don't quite understand like the loadout stuff like that, but I'm sure it will all come into play. Warrior. Uh, oh, class items, the drawing of a lover or a sharpening stone. I like that. So this is like kind of like a fighter, I guess. Uh, battle strategist, whenever you make a roll to physically hinder a creature that isn't a weapon attack, like a shove, triple, grapple, you can spend a hope to have advantage. On a success, you can choose to deal 1d8 physical damage to the targets. Ignore burden when equipping weapons. Oh, so you can probably carry extra weapons. Always add additional physical damage equal to the value of your level. Ah, okay. So you just like hit a bit harder. All right, wizard. A tiny and harmless elemental pet. I would like to be a wizard so we can have a tiny, so we can be a little frog and we can also have a little pet. <gasps> a little like dragonfly or something. That would be really cute. Uh, you can perform harmless subtle magic effects at will. Uh, anytime you roll a picked number on a duality die, gain a hope or clear a stress. Also, that's kind of like a prophecy sort of divination kind of a vibe. That's fun. All right, I'm going with wizard purely because I would like to have a tiny and harmless elemental pet. <gasps> Looks like a water drop. Yes. Okay, let's do that. All right, how do I pick select class? This interface is really cool to use. This is way nicer than other character builders I've used. No shade, okay. So we choose a subclass. All right, school of knowledge or school of war. I like the idea of like a little old, a little old man frog who's been studying for a long time. My first thought was to be a frog with a frog. Honestly, great. I, I did have a very similar thought. All right, we're just gonna speed through this because I know Critical Role is live. Okay, school of knowledge. Um, we're gonna select our traits. All right, so let's use the suggested traits because I think that's probably better. So use suggested traits. So that would be, does it set it for me? Does it, oh, okay, yeah, it just sets it for me. So we don't have good agility. We have strength, finesse. Wait, I just realized we're a sly, we come from like a sly born, but we're also a wizard. <laughs> Look, we'll bring the story together somehow, okay? I don't know how we're gonna do it. Choose our starting weapons. Oh my gosh, there's actually quite a lot. Woo. Okay. Oh, it suggests that I have a great staff. That's cool. I like how it's got a little suggestion at the top. Great staff. Sure. We'll select that. Can we have another one? Choose one primary weapon, primary weapon and one secondary weapon. Okay. Ooh. 
It's quite a lot to choose from. Well, we need a wand, obviously. <laughs> obviously. All right, starting armor. So yeah, your armor like reduces the damage that's coming in, right? Until it gets damaged and then it no longer works. Oh, so we're gonna have a breastplate as a wizard. That's interesting. Sure, it suggests that we have that. Starting inventory, a minor health potion or a minor stamina potion? I don't know what would be better. Health potion, I guess? A tiny and harmless pet. And then decide what you carry your spells in. What do we carry our spells in? Once upon a time, our ribbit stole a wizard's book. There you go. Perfect. What do we carry our spell? What's a froggy thing we can carry our spells in? Hmm. Like a little... Do we just carry them in our mouth? <laughs> yes, Dick you are. We're on the same page. <laughs> oh, stamina is for... I should probably look at this and it will tell me what it does. Oh, stress? Yeah, that makes sense. We just carry it in our... Oh, a lily pad backpack is really cute though. A lily pad backpack. That's really cute. That's cuter than the throat pouch. <laughs> lily pad backpack. Okay. All right, and we need to take a domain deck cards. Oh gosh, okay. Ooh, uh, ooh. Hmm, okay, let's do a bolt beacon. Cause we're a wizard. And this one, cause it has a magic hand. Let's do that. Okay, experiences. Oh, there's still more to go. All right, choose your description. Oh, clothes that are, hmm. Clothes that are cute. <laughs> Little. <laughs> Brown. <laughs> Eyes like. Like water lilies. Body that's short and rotund. The color of. Green flame. <laughs> green flame. Attitude like. Ooh. A librarian. That's cute. Okay. All right, answer background questions. What did your community ooh, used to count on you for? How did you let them down? Oh, okay. Maybe we were like stealing gold from, from the nobles, but we stole a magic book instead. I love how I'm writing we, <laughs> but I stole a magic book instead and became a wizard, a frigizard. A frizzard. A frozzard. <laughs> uh, you spent your life searching for an object or book of great significance. What is it and why is it important to you? The fabled tales of the frog. Of the ultimate supreme frozzard. The most powerful frog spellcaster. Guys, I'm taking this very seriously. I hope you realize, of all time. You have a powerful rival. Who are they and why are they so determined to be their end? Toad! <laughs> Toad is a dastardly creature who thinks frogs... No, that's racist. Who... Who wants to be the one to be the ultimate frozzard? <laughs> This is so dumb. Ultimate Frozzard. He is trying to get to the book before us. What are we thinking about this? <laughs> Frogizard? Frogizard would be fun. Frozzard, Frogizard is maybe better. But we'll come back to that. All right, generate, generate experience. Okay. Experience is a word or phrase used to encapsulate encapsulate a specific set of skills your character might have because of the exciting life they've lived. You start with two experiences at character creation. There's no set list of experiences to choose from, though some examples are offered below. Ah, okay. Interesting. So you kind of pick your own skills. That's pretty cool. Hmm, okay. 
so hmm all right enter experience I guess what would be a good experience for a, a wizardy type person hmm Toad is favorite enemy. Toad is my new most hated BBEG. <laughs> One of those gets to be a plus two. Yeah, so I guess like, is like Arcana? Uh, or like, what if we do like m identifying magic? Is that like, is that, do you think that's a thing? Um, Identifying magic, maybe like translating texts? since we're like looking for a book and we want to like translate it, maybe. That does seem very open-ended. Okay, create connections. Oh, so this is like questions for other party members. All right, we need a name. We'll make they them. What should our, what should our toad wizard who used to come from a rogue family. What what should their name be before we finish up? Robert? <laughs> I don't know if we can top that chat. So Ribbit, Speedfrog, Fred. Fred is also pretty good with a PH. I like that. Froggy, Frog, frog Alf, <laughs> Gandalf. You can have a phrase for a social thing. I think it's finding capabilities later, right. Crazy Frog, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. My kid is obsessed with that song. That song has made a comeback. Well, obviously the song's not called Crazy Frog, but that's why he always calls it. You vote Robert. I think Robert is pretty good. Croaky William. William the Frog? No, because I've never ever called anyone William and I never will ever in my life. Robin Hobbs, that's also pretty cute. Humdinger. All right, we'll go with Robert. Robert the Frobbit. <laughs> No, we'll just call him Robert. <laughs> I would never call someone William. What are you talking about? Axel F is a buff. Yeah, yeah, he's obsessed with that at the moment. We we play it constantly at home. Begin. Oh, that's then it's done. Now I see my character sheet. What does it look like? Oh, I didn't pick my character portrait. Whoops. Ooh, this character sheet, my brain does not like it. That's a lot of colors and different font sizes that my brain does not enjoy. <laughs> However, I like the I liked the character creator stuff, but I find this to be a lot. I think it's because they're mimicking the cards, but it's my brain is not enjoying it. But I'm sure if I actually read it, I would be okay. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, here you go, everyone. I give you Robert, the Slyborn Ribbit Wizard. <laughs> From the School of Knowledge. And he's a very important character and he has a very serious story to tell. Okay? <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to wrap it up there, everybody. I'm glad we did manage to squeeze in a character extremely quickly. I mean, the process was really quick. Way quicker than building, like, a D&D &D character. Um, well, unless you're using D&D &D Beyond, I guess, then it can get pretty quick. But, um... Maybe the top three horizontal lines give options. Oh, up here? Where? Top three horizontal lines? Where? Ah! What do you mean three? Where? These ones? I don't know. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot on here. Anyway. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Um, please stay tuned. Next week, I am hoping to run a Daggerheart one-shot, which should be really interesting. Oh, I see it right here. Thank you. Mm, yeah. <laughs> please stay tuned next week um for a dagger heart one shot that i'm hopefully gonna run this time next week or like a bit earlier than this um you can check out my discord or my twitter to find out when slash where that is happening i'm also going to be doing a lot more diving into the playset. we didn't even get to look at the playtest materials so we're probably going to do that um sometime later this week uh, i am also of course doing my Baldur's gate 3 honor run where i'm playing as caleb widowgast so if you're interested in checking that out please make sure you follow so you don't miss a stream uh thank you so much to everybody who tuned in and gifted subs and whatnot i'm not gonna raid because critical role has turned off raids which kind of sucks, but um, yeah, I will see you all over there. We do have a live watch party also in the Discord if you are not part of the Discord. 
Uh, there'll be a live watch party for the one shot in there. Today, I'm going to go and get ready for my Adelaide Fringe show. Ah, if anyone is coming, please come and say hi to me. I'm very, very face blind. So please introduce yourself with your username because otherwise I will go ah, like this because my brain... I don't recognize people when I'm stressed and I'm anxious. So please come and say hi to me. Um, and yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you all when I see you, whenever that will be. It'll be in a couple of days when I stream next. But yeah, thanks everyone. Bye.